Hello, hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel. This is Tamur and this is my channel, The Cloud Security Guy, on which we talk about things like cloud and AI and general cyber security career advice. And today I want to talk about an, like something uh, which a lot of people struggle with, which is implementing cloud security, like, uh, and more specifically implementing cloud security strategy, you know, how to go about it. So the cloud is not going away anytime soon. I've seen a lot of, uh, uh, what do you call talk about it that people are going back to on-prem and all that i honestly am very skeptical about it a lot of companies what they do is they jump to the cloud without understanding how the cloud works and thinking that all their expenses are going to go down which is not really ever the case because you gone to the cloud without understanding the model first so the cloud is not going to go away first you can literally look at any sort of study which is going on cloud spending is only going to go up and one of the major reasons is is ai as companies adopt more and more artificial intelligence be it generative ai be it ai model machine learning they are going to use the cloud because nobody is going to like put all that data on prem the ai needs a massive amount of processing power storage uh, data and all those things the cloud is built for so as ai becomes more and more popular we're going to see more and more cloud adoption also. So at the very minimum, you're going to see like a hybrid model. Okay. So don't believe these people who say the cloud is going to go away. It's like a trend and all that, please. Let's that's completely ridiculous. And, but one of the problems I see is when people do get hired and then they are asked to implement a cloud security strategy, they don't know where to start, right? There's a big confusion. They don't know what to do. Do I implement a solution? Do I turn on this service? Where do I start? How do I mature? And I've seen a lot of people ask me these questions. And I think I made one video like two, two and a half years back. Like a, uh, and it's gotten a bit out of date. So I thought to update this video and talk about specifically a cloud security roadmap, you know, cloud security strategy of how to secure it. And it's very, very important because if you don't do this correctly, then it can lead to wrong, wrong investments, right? Wasted time and it can lead to a data breach, right? So because you've wasted all your effort because you didn't know what to do and how to do it. So that's why it's so important to implement cloud security properly in a step by step process. And before we move ahead, please do like and subscribe to the channel and share this video. That will really help the channel to grow. Thanks. So what are we talking about here? So these are the steps I would do. And if I was to implement cloud security strategy in a company at a high level, these are this is what I would do. I have divided this into three stages, which is foundational assessing and implementing and optimize. And I've tried to make this as detailed as possible based on my experience, but not so detailed so that like most companies are not, it, it doesn't become applicable to them, right? This is like a high level roadmap, which any company can use, any technology can use. I work in AWS as a security consultant, just being completely honest with you, but I've deliberately made this high level so any technology can implement it. I'm not gonna talk about things like uh, carrying out VA scans or penetration testing, as user access reviews, you should already be doing those. Honestly, this is more about your cloud journeys and what are the steps you have to take. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about. Okay, the first step is foundational phase, which is extremely important where you build your knowledge and your understanding of the cloud. A lot of the times why cloud security fails is CISOs or cybersecurity teams, they simply copy paste their on-prem model into the cloud and not understanding the cloud Will result in very powerful capabilities being ignored so that's why you need to have a proper solid foundation before you start your journey onto the cloud right understand the how the cloud works what is the model this is i like to call uh, the foundational phase but it can also be called the confusion phase because you're trying to understand stuff right and there are a few key areas that you should be focusing on which is your regulatory environment okay the shared responsibility model upskilling your teams and the risk assessment so what are the key areas here? This is very, very important, the regulatory environment. Uh, you need to know what are the regulations for your particular region in which you're working. Because if you don't know that, you could potentially move workloads and data into the cloud, which you are not authorized to move. And you can later on get subject to severe regulatory fines. And you, why is this so important? Because certain countries and regions don't allow data to be moved out of their region, right? Their geographies. And you can get heavy penalties for non-compliance. Uh, so you need to understand, hey, am I even allowed to move data and workloads into the cloud? Find out, check with your legal department. Don't make this decision in isolation. Check with your compliance teams, check with your legal teams, 
to find out okay so this is a crucial area which gets missed out and only later on do people realize ke, hey we should have checked whether we are even allowed by our regulations right something like especially in the middle east uh, where they don't allow data to move out of the regions or the eu where they're very very strict so please understand this first the next step is the shared responsibility model this is another area which a lot of people sometimes they forget this is one of the most important things to know right up front before you implement anything in the cloud you won't believe how many companies i know they move into the cloud with the mistaken understanding that going forward microsoft or google or aws is going to handle everything and they don't have to do anything all the security obligations are gone this is a huge mistake because the cloud comes with the shared responsibility where both of you have to do the customer has to do and the cloud provider has to do so this is something uh, this diagram is, is taken from aws but it applies to pretty much any cloud provider so remember a lot of things the cloud provider will do and just because aws or azure is compliant to best practices does not mean automatically you are compliant to do a lot of the foundational work is done but you still have to go and implement controls on your data and applications right it's like living in a rented property right so the landlord is going to make sure your overall building is okay but he's not going to come and lock the doors and windows for you right that's your job so understand the shared responsibility model the next step is skill ramping up and you a lot of times another mistake i see is companies what they do is when they are implementing cloud security they get consultants to come in and implement but once they leave and the internal team have to pick up they don't have the skills right they don't have the skills of running day to day operations in cloud security without knowing how, how cloud security works and principle works you really will have a severe problem down the road and your teams will be at a big disadvantage so please upskill your teams go get certified get those proper workshops done make sure that you invest in that knowledge and make this an annual thing we are reskilling and we are talking about this because this will give your team the confidence and the knowledge they need to really start securing the environments i have made multiple videos on cloud security certifications you can check that out and the last step of the foundation phase is of course to do risk assessment like find out what are the risks of moving into the cloud your workloads and everything i'm not going to spend too much time on this because honestly this is a basic thing which it should be there in your company if it's not there you really should implement it this is a basic step for any major project to do a risk assessment and find out what are the unique risk for your environment the next step is the assess and implement phase so now that you have a solid foundational understanding of the cloud and you understand that you can move into the cloud now we'll start looking at how to secure the cloud environment as i mentioned before don't try to copy paste blindly copy paste whatever tool you have on prem but always try to understand how the cloud works and what is the best way of securing your environment right and this can be the phase with the most effort required by the teams and you'll get a lot of stress here when you're trying to understand but if you break it down there are two steps here one is the cloud security model where you understand the key concepts that have to be implemented and the tooling and the tooling you can go as deep but the minimum two things i would recommend is a cloud security posture management and a cloud workload protection platform and we'll go go into detail what i'm talking about here but remember uh, what companies do and what cso's do they just implement tools without any processes backing them up so what will happen is you'll have lots of findings but nobody is fixing them because you didn't implement a cloud security model first so and what is a cloud security model these are the processes and the controls and the things you should have right before when you're starting your cloud security journey your processes right things like threat modeling because it's not just one workload right you will have lots and lots of workloads moving into the cloud understand how threat modeling works how to identify threats within the cloud your simple vanilla risk assessments won't work you need to really understand how to implement proper threat modeling the next step is the identity and access management your identity becomes the firewall remember that so you need to have things like sso and i'll go into more detail here you need to do things like benchmarking where tools like cspm will help you out infrastructure as code logging and alerting will your soc team handle it who will be looking at the alerts do you go with native cloud based tools or you do have you are you going to invest in third party tooling all these decisions you need to think about here why is sso so important because you will have you might have multiple cloud providers or you might already have uh, an existing active directory please try to leverage it don't create another identity store because you'll have i don't know like 500 users on prem and then those same users will get duplicated make sure you enforce 
as single sign on a lot of people forget about this and later on it becomes extremely challenging because they have to migrate all the users do this before you move into the cloud so your identity and access management processes they can benefit from a single sign on functionality okay the next step is infrastructure as code so nobody in the cloud nobody is like uh, you know going to the console the graphical interface and spinning up a hundred servers it is all captured as code so you need to make sure your controls are in the cloud also so whatever pipelines you might have or whatever infrastructure code you have are you sure do you know that they are being scanned for security controls or not so these things you need to upscale immediately put those controls there before you get some insecure infrastructure being spun in the cloud and have a data breach so focus on this uh, and secure infrastructure as code so th those are just a few examples of the cloud security model the next step is cloud security tooling and this is the step where people like to jump towards without building up the background which i talked about so things like cloud security posture management cloud workloads you know threat intelligence and incident response you can put in you can use the native cloud services so what is the cloud security posture management solution you might have others this is usually either a cloud native or a third party solution and what it does is it benchmarks your cloud environment against best practices they keep checking and they let you know whether you are meeting best practices uh, whether are there any insecure configurations because in the cloud changes happen very very fast so you need to have some sort of tool with benchmarking and security assessments configured that can tell you immediately if any issues are there and it will also help you to identify quick wins you can just turn it on look at the best practices which are there it will tell you hey uh, like you haven't turned on mfa you haven't turned on encryption so instead of you running around trying to find out what it is you'll immediately be able to look, use the cspm to focus upon it and this is like there are many many tools like this is aws security hub microsoft as cloud defender and there are many third party solutions i'm not going to recommend any particular one you can be the judge of that based on what you have the second one is the cloud workload protection platform so the cloud is not just about the configurations right you also have workloads like servers apis containers serverless functions all these things come on who is going to be securing them how, how do you secure them so there are many ways and one of the simplest ways i do recommend always is to implement a cloud workload protection platform this is something which scans your workloads for vulnerabilities when they're being spun up and when they are running and it will let you know if you have some sort of security issues both cspm and cwpp they're very very critical so this is how gartner like shows them right so at the workload level you have the cwpp working and at the uh, platform level so uh, you have the cspm and both of them are working together to secure the cloud don't just implement one implement both of them a lot of third party solutions they come with both of these controls configured and uh, honestly the abbreviations change a lot i mean every year gartner comes up with a new abbreviation so don't get caught up in like what it's being called just make sure that these concepts are there that you have security at the platform level and at the workload level so now we moved on to the last phase which is the optimizing and maturing phase and this is the phase where you start to gain confidence in your cloud controls and you can start to focus on more strategic work and you can start to improve your cloud maturity right so this is where you would want to use some sort of a maturity framework to find out how good your cloud security is you want to fine tune your alerts you know turn on something like auto remediation for the alerts that are there because now you have a better idea you might want to clean up your cloud permissions you want to make sure your risks are being tracked and you want to reskill a thing which gets missed out a lot so this is like i made a video a while back about the aws security maturity model and you can honestly use this for any environment or you can use some other third party to come in and assess your cloud maturity because believe me when i say you will have made mistakes that that's normal because it's a massive journey and so have your cloud security assessed i do not mean doing a security scan okay i mean somebody coming in or you doing it yourself checking the processes checking the maturity of your cloud and what are the key improvements you have to do apart from that make sure to look at automation fine tuning your alerts a lot of things you will find out you could probably automate and save yourself like the chances of a data breach happening because the cloud moves very 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 fast okay and you will have a lot of risks which you identified which were not able to be closed make sure you now you're doing that risk cracking and risk posture so that you know which are the key risks you need to focus on you will never have a completely clean risk register but make sure that tracking is there and you're tracking all the risks to closure in this maturity phase 
and lastly reskilling as you have become more and more confident get somebody to do a complete workshop on cloud security a lot of people focus on upskilling but they forget reskilling reskilling is when you refresh those concepts they have this happen every year or every six months and you will see your maturity improving over time both at the technical level and at your own skill level right so this was like a crash course you can see on creating a cloud security strategy step by step this is like i said based on my own uh, understanding and my own experiences over 20 years almost working in this particular industry if you feel i missed out some very basic stuff and you think this is like stupid let me know <laughs> if you liked it and you could benefit from it please do let me know i'm always happy to do that i'll try to create one for the cloud like a complete cyber security uh, roadmap also which is not just focused on cloud security but i hope this was useful to you uh, please try and implement this within your company if you're confused about cloud security do like and subscribe to this channel thank you and i'll see you in the next video